Hey, Jason. Gianna below you said she liked your question. I do too. I'm going to give you the Bible answers. So uh, I've, I've made a I've made a teaching meme several years ago that says we don't want you to join, leave your denomination and join ours. We don't. We want you to reject all religious division because religious division is against Christ. Obey the one gospel of Christ and Jesus himself will add you to his one church. So if we go back to the, to the beginning where Jesus said, I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. If we have the understanding that that is singular and possessive and permanent, then we can say, oh, well, I want that church. I want to be part of his church rather than part of denominations which didn't exist when he said that. So it's been 10 hours since you made that comment and, and Luke hasn't answered. And I see Coogan Collins, he's a Christian too. I see he answered too, but I couldn't, I couldn't help myself. So we love everybody in a let's go to heaven together kind of way. And that's why we do what we do. So what we would like for you to do is uh, look at the accounts of conversion in the book of Acts and do what they did. At that point, you will become a Christian and Jesus himself will add you to his one church, which is not a denomination. Now, we can know that that happens. Acts 2.38, repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins. Acts 2.47, the Lord added to the church daily, those who are being saved. You actually can't join the church of Christ. Uh, you have to be added to it by Jesus. And he does that when you repent and you're baptized. Um, if we look at the Lord's Prayer for unity in John 17, 20 through 23, and then if we look at 1 Corinthians 1, 10 through 13, God speaking through Paul, we learn how God feels about religious division, denominations. Um, that John 17, 20 through 23 prayer recorded for us, neither pray I for these alone, but also for those who will believe in me through their word, that they all may be one Father as you and I are one, so that they may be made perfect in one. And he just keeps going on and saying one, one, one. He wants us to be together, wants us to be one. Well, denominations are divisions. They think that they are divisions of Christianity. But once you have divided, once you say, I'm this kind of a Christian, you cease being a Christian. There are no hyphenated Christians. There aren't, there aren't this going to sting. There are no Baptist Christians. There are no Protestant Christians of any kind, no Wesleyan or Lutheran Christians. There's no Catholic Christians or Orthodox Christians. There are Christians, those who have done what Jesus said they must do for salvation, and then there are lost people. They, they might have invited Jesus into their heart or accepted Jesus as their personal Savior or said a sinner's prayer or wanted to be saved like the thief on the cross or by faith alone. But those things aren't in the Bible. And Jesus didn't offer that way of salvation. Jesus did say, he that believes and is baptized will be saved in Mark 16, 16. So he's not saying that you have to be part of this denomination. He's saying you can't be part of a denomination and be saved. Instead, you have to be part of Jesus' church. The one that he promised to build in Mark in uh, Matthew 16, 18, the one that he promised would always stand. It's still here. The one that he said what he would build, he said the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. It's here. So let's uh, shore up that evidence about religious division and how Jesus feels about it. 1 Corinthians 1, 10. We're going to touch on verse 13 after. Now I beseech you, brethren. I'm urging you. In the name of, that means by the authority of. Now I beseech you, brethren, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that you all speak the same thing. That there be no divisions among you. No denominations. Religious division is against Christ. That's what denominations are. No d divisions among you, but that you all be perfectly joined together in the same mind and the same judgment. That's verse 10 of 1 Corinthians 1. You drop down to verse 13 and... and um, he said, some of you are saying you're a Paul kind of Christian. Some of you, have, he says, some, some of you are saying, I'm of Paul, I'm of Apollos, I'm of Cephas, and I'm of Christ. Is Christ divided? So that, that part's a rhetorical question. Were you baptized in the name of Paul? So Paul goes on to correct being baptized in the name of Paul right there. He said, I'm glad I didn't baptize more of you because some of you are saying I'm baptized in, that you were baptized in my name. And that's not okay. Uh, we can't be Paul kind of Christians. And he was an apostle directly inspired to speak what he spoke. If we can't be Paul kind of Christians, then how much less can we be Baptist, Methodist, Lutheran, Catholic kind of Christians? That Today, that, that 
verse can be rephrased as, now some of you are saying, I'm a Baptist, I'm a Methodist, I'm a Catholic, and I'm a Lutheran. Is Christ divided? So Christ isn't divided, and if you divide the body, it kills the body, and it's no longer part of Christ once you have divided into a denomination. So we're not asking you to uh, leave your denomination and join ours. We're asking you to stop practicing what hurts Jesus, which is religious division. No divisions among you, 1 Corinthians 1.10. No denominations among you. Instead, be perfectly joined together with the Christians by just saying what the Bible says uh, about the one church of the Bible, the one church that belongs to Christ. See, the church of Christ isn't a name. It's a designation of ownership. It's the church that belongs to Christ. It's the one. It's his church. It's his body. It's his bride. It's his kingdom. We want to be part of that church, and we love you, and we want you to be part of that church, his church, not a denomination. So we're not asking you to leave your denomination and join ours. We're asking you to reject all religious division which hurts Christ, obey the one gospel of Christ. The gospel means the good news. It's the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ, and we have to obey the gospel. We do. That's uh, second, that's second Thessalonians 1, 7 through 9, um, Romans 10, 13, and 16. Romans 6 lays this out. It lays out obeying the gospel. 2 Thessalonians 1.8 says, In flaming fire, taking vengeance on them that know not God and obey not the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. It says what it says. We've got to obey the gospel or else. The obedience to the gospel is defined for us in Romans 6. And Paul starts there by saying, Do you not know? Don't you know this? Only as many of us... As we're baptized into Jesus Christ, we're baptized into his death. Therefore, that's the death part. Therefore, we were buried. That's the burial part. Death, burial, and resurrection is the gospel. Therefore, we were buried with him through baptism. We're with him in baptism and raised to walk in newness of life. That's the death, burial, and resurrection. Verse 17 in, in Romans 6 says that they obeyed from the heart that form of doctrine delivered to them. They obeyed the gospel. So denominations don't teach this, and that's why they're denominations rather than being the church of Christ. I hope you see what I did there. Denominations rather than the church of Christ. So we're not a denomination. We love you, and we want you to be part of Jesus and his one church. That's why we do what we do. Luke, who you're responding to, he teaches the truth, and I would encourage you, especially if you know him, I encourage you to, to get with him. He's a sound teacher of the truth. And, and if you're close to him physically, oh, yeah, man, meet him. Go, go sit down for some coffee and talk about it. Open up your Bibles and see what God has to, to say about this, what, what God has uh, planned for your life. Yeah, yeah. I hope that's a good answer for you. We love y'all, like you and the person who said that they liked your question. I like your question, too. So thank you. My name's Paul. I'm a Christian. I did exactly what those people did in, in the book of Acts, Acts chapter 2. I repented and I, was, and I was baptized and Jesus put me in his church. And that's what we want for you too. Thank you.